food. Tighten that. First video, let's go. What is up guys, your boy Wayne Jackson and welcome to my channel. As you saw from the description, I am a software engineer and I work for a certain big company. And I would have to say this up front that my opinions are my own and I'm just kind of giving my personal story here. So I'm not representing any company. So these tips are coming from my personal experience and things that I think were crucial in my success in the field of software engineering and ultimately landed me the job that I have now. So these are five tips, five quick of those. Bruh. Five quick tips on how to land that top tech job. Let's get into it. Tip number one, learn computer science theory. Now, what do I mean when I say computer science theory? I'm talking about your data structures and your algorithms. In my opinion, and many other engineers' opinions, it makes you a better engineer when you understand the foundation of computer science, a better software engineer, I should say. Reason being is that it allows you to optimize your code. For instance, let's say there's a problem that you're trying to solve, right? And there's a specific data structure that you may need in order to come up with the optimal solution for this problem. If you don't know that thing exists, then how the hell? How the hell are you gonna come up with that solution, right? So that's why I say learn that theory. It'll also help you in the coding interviews, and we'll get more into that later on. I don't wanna to touch too much on that right now. But yeah, learn your theory, stop falling asleep in that data structures class. Tip number two, work on side projects. Now I cannot stress the importance of this, right? Class projects didn't really engage me enough to where I felt like I was really grasping those concepts, right? Reason being is that class projects tend to be centered around a particular concept that you are learning in class at the time, whereas side projects involve real world problems, hopefully, if you have an interesting enough one, and they engage in the critical thinking part of your brain. And what I think that does is it really solidifies those concepts you're learning in the classroom and it forces you to fill in the knowledge gaps for the things that are not taught in the classroom. A lot of the same problems that you run into once you actually start working in your career. Also, it's good to have a passion for what you're doing, right? If you have something in particular that you wanna build and you're passionate about it, naturally you're gonna be more engaged in learning what you need to learn in order to build that and in order to improve it. For example, when I was in college, it wasn't until I decided to build an Android app because at the time we were learning Java, that I really fell in love with building things with code because code at the end of the day is just a tool to build cool shit. That's facts. Also as a side effect of having side projects, you have a portfolio when you graduate and that will automatically set you apart from most of the other candidates. Tip number three is to freelance. Now, what do I mean when I say freelance? I essentially mean build things with code for people for an exchange, whether that exchange is currency or that person doing you a favor or maybe just building a connection, right? Building stuff for people, somebody else's idea will kind of help you start to think like an engineer. It also has the ability to teach you soft skills, such as negotiating, marketing yourself, being more disciplined, and dealing with conflict when you have a client that may be difficult, because I definitely had some of those while I was freelancing. It also has the additional benefit of building you connections, building your business network. It also, like tip number two, has the ability to help you build a portfolio before you graduate. Another thing that is gonna set you apart. Just having a portfolio, having work that you've done shows, first of all, it shows passion, it shows discipline, because you don't have to do it. You can very well go through college just doing class projects, school projects, and getting straight A's, and then graduate. But that is not gonna give you the skills that you need, in my opinion, to be a good engineer coming out the gate, being ready to build things and ship them. And you get to earn some cash flow, which is always nice, getting them bands. But some of you may be asking though, Wayne, how do I get clients? Well, there's many ways you can get clients. The obvious one being, of course, you can go around on your, your campus or whatever that is that you're on. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. And find people that want things built, whether it's a website or an app or anything. But what I did for the most part, the most successful way that I was able to freelance was through a website. And there's many of these websites out here for freelancing, but the one in particular I used was 
upwork.com and there's my portfolio i'm gonna show it on the screen here i was able to earn some good cash flow while being in college and on top of that i was becoming a better programmer and a better engineer and my soft skills with dealing with people dealing with clients were improving and that stuff helps you out in interviews as well i feel like it's not talked about enough the soft skills and maybe in a future video i'll talk more about particular soft skills that i think are important for being successful as a software engineer tip number four internships internships are crucial man first of all they teach you hard skills they teach you how to work on a team they teach you how to work for a company it's a good way of gaining feedback as an engineer you get more formalized feedback from internships they also have the additional benefit if it's a company that you want to work for after college of increasing your chances of getting a full-time offer assuming that you do well you also get to build a professional network which is always good the more people you know in the field the more opportunities that can present themselves to you i made some great engineering mentors during my internships john if you're watching this john ewing thank you for everything tip number five last but not least understand the coding interview process obviously the only way you're going to get into one of these companies is if you can pass the coding interviews especially for top tech companies like google facebook apple amazon you need to understand how they interview you need to understand the expectations and the material that you need to learn that goes back to tip number one learning that theory a lot of that theory is going to come in handy when it comes to these coding interviews. These processes are very well documented on the internet and for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to get too much into them in this video, maybe in a future video. I'll go more into depth on how to pass coding interviews and kind of some of the tips that I have. But yeah, like all the information you need and will ever need is out there on the web right now. It's up to you, though, to understand that process and to prepare for that process. So hopefully you guys found this video useful in your journey as an aspiring software engineer. Feel free to leave me any feedback or questions in that comment section down there. If you liked the video and you found it useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, follow me on Instagram and shoot me a message on there if you have any additional questions. Also, I have to say this as a disclaimer, if you do subscribe, that I will not be strictly posting software engineering content, but more so overall life and career advice. Life advice, career advice, basically things for this thing the mind. But yeah, thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you guys next time. Peace.